Hello, Caitlin Hayes here, Spiritualize Yourself, along with Omar Turner from the wonderful Provobs Innovation. And we are going to discuss with you how we can achieve balance on our path to purpose, which is so exciting. And just to start, I want to do a prayer so that we can align ourselves and align our intentions here, because we would like to share from our heart space in ways that we can support you in starting this conversation to bring the gap from spirituality into your reality. Okay, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, all our angels, Mary, please guide us and support us here in this conversation so that we may share value and share information and, and support the conversation and bringing the spirituality deeper into our lives so that we can live on purpose and with that love and support and guidance in our heart. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. <sighs> yes. Caitlin, yes. The problem. Yes, tell me the that problem. That was such a great prayer that I feel peaceful now. I'm no longer mad. <laughs> That's it. The show is over. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I can I can rob you back up again. Don't worry. We can go the other way too. <laughs> no, I'm mad again. All right. <laughs> so tell but, me, what is it? Yeah, tell what what is it that you've been frustrated with that you've been seeing that that total gap between spirituality and reality? Yes, I think there's a disconnection when we're talking about. For me, it's it's balance. It's understanding. Yes, I am spiritual, but yes, I'm also here in this physical world. And for, even for me, I had a hard time. At one point in my life, I was very physical. I was very materialistic. And then I went, I skyrocketed into the spiritual realm. And I was very spiritual up there. Like, ah, oh, God, I'm everything. Just everything's going to come because, you know, I come across all these readings and all these people speaking. And they were just saying, you know, oh, just keep your thoughts positive. Your thoughts, your thoughts. Everything's going to yeah. come to you through your thoughts. So I just stayed in my bed <laughs> waiting for everything to come. And it didn't happen. And I'm like, hmm. So as time got got you know grew and i noticed um my bills piling up and, you know and clients weren't coming as a as a life coach i really had to um really evaluate myself reevaluate and say hmm i need to live be more grounded here in the physical world right you know cuz i also i was at a point where i was only trying to attach myself only to other spiritual people. But here's a problem. When you're trying to charge spiritual people for your, for your um, services, they're already telling you, I know this already. I don't need to pay for your services. Or they're going to tell you they got no money to pay you. Or they have the money. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Like, I just quit my job. I'm like, well. <laughs> oh, that's a different spiritual group. I know a lot that don't even have a job to quit. <laughs> you know, but that's what they do. They say, oh, I just quit my job. Can you help me? I'm like, first of all, <laughs> I can help you while you have your job <laughs> and I can help you get another one, but you quit your job and then you find me. So then you're asking me basically not to charge you anything because you don't have a job. And, and that's where we, you know, all jokes aside, this is where we're, we're trying to get to people to understand that I don't care. I understand we're empaths. I understand that we're sensitive. I understand a lot, but we also have to, dig in, dig our feet into this earth that we're here on and living in and move forward in the physical. And, and, and just, and, and, and honestly, honestly, you already have God, you already have the angels, you have the support of the universe. You have all of it. You're, but you're supposed to take that support now and trust the process. Trust whatever you're doing is going to work. You're going to attract right. your clients. You're going to attract because you because your your heart is good. You know your thoughts are good. So um, so people are going to pay for your for your creativity, your intellect, your the warmth that only you can provide. People, it, it's for us now to figure out the talents that that we were given. How do we make money with them? 
Right. How do you support yourself? And, and even deeper than that, before we even get to that, I want to just address awareness because, mm -hmm. you know, just we do have access to the gods and the angels and people may intellectually know that from a third dimensional perspective or from this reality. Okay, we have that. That's nice. But having that this deep spiritual awareness and that's through that meditation connection. So having that awareness. Okay, so we have the aptitude to actually feel that. And, and create that space, that sacred space of allowing for that to actually visibly manifest into our lives. And what does that mean? You know, having that kind of open dialogue with spirit, with your angels and connecting with that source energy and being aware of that, of that otherness that coexists in our, in our current, in our current reality, in our third mm -hmm. dimensional reality. And having said that, what you're saying is that, yes, we have to figure it out how to to support the purpose, the unfoldment of what we're doing. And obviously from the financial perspective, that's, that's imperative to create a value-based purposeful life in order that you may sustain that mission and that purpose. So it's just to feed the purpose of what you're doing and along the affirmational sense of yes, we're creating, yes, we're doing. But that's when I see that the awareness inspires the action. Because obviously the affirmations are very important to do and have a healthy mindset is the utmost importance on this journey. But having that connection to spirit is what inspires your actions and breaks away that the cyclical habits of lack thinking, of, um, of, of unworthiness to fulfill your purpose. I think sometimes that even comes out to the surface of, oh, I have this inclination to be an energy healer or a Reiki practitioner, but... I'm still so associated with my profession and I'll share something personal on this. So I'm an attorney and I do the spiritual advising work and I am now shedding my legal practice in order to focus and more on my own spiritual purpose and aligning my other interests, creative interests with that. And I still see inside of myself raising up inside of myself, this inclination in my mind to associate any sense of success with this kind of professional acumen and this professional stature of being an attorney or an executive coach. And not that I don't love doing those things, I know that my skill set, which includes this connection and this awareness of this higher dimensional self, is what my purpose is more appropriate to be. Right. Because that, so, but you still go through that in your mind. You still are reflecting in your mind what you think you're supposed to be doing. And, and it could be based on, you know, a lot of, I spent a lot of time becoming a lawyer, obviously. And there were so many other curveballs that came at me anyway. But in any event, you're finding yourself achieving a different sense of balance when you're opening up to the source. This is when it becomes like the 5D or the higher dimensional self manifesting in your current reality. This is, I think, where that shift starts to occur is obviously that awareness factor and then that inspiration factor of inspiring your actions, right? So that you can take it one by one by one. Also then having the larger platform of what the bigger goals are, right? What your vision is for your life. And it's a new moon now in Pisces. So we have the time now. Pisces to all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a good time to do that and set the bigger, the bigger picture of it. But mm -hmm. it is that moment to moment awareness of that. So tell me what you saw in the past couple of days or the past couple of times where you see that this, this disconnect of the spirituality with the reality from the sense of inapplicability of spirituality into reality, of wh where the disregard is in the spirituality to reality. Well, I mean, even I can take it from a church stance where even, you know, the pastors, the priests, you know, preachers, they, um, they don't emphasize the action piece of, of it. They don't emphasize, like, I don't know why, but I feel like money is a taboo. <laughs> you know, like we don't talk about money. We talk about giving collection. You know, we talk about, you know, tithing, but we don't speak about, all right, congregation, what are you guys doing every day? What steps are you taking? How are you, because I know people who meditate for 15 hours a day and probably work for two hours. <laughs> I mean, like, but I have to be centered. I have to be, no. <laughs> no, but if they're making money in those two hours, that's fine too. They're not. Oh, <laughs> they're not making enough. <laughs> they're not making enough. 
And that's the, that's, you know what? And I, and I see what you're saying, but I have to say that that part of healing, mm -hmm. where you are in that part of your healing journey is it's so important to be sensitive to that too. So if they're healing and they're like PTSD and they're like going through their thing and that's what they need to survive, like on a mental, emotional, spiritual level, you know, I'd say that's okay. So long as they're not you know, homeless on the streets and that, that obviously becomes a big problem. And that's where that kind of thing could lead to if you're not aware of the reality consequences of your spiritual decisions. You just perfectly said that, that well said. Um, um, so now my, man, that was such a great statement that you just gave. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm uh, distracted, but I'm okay. I'm distracted by the children upstairs <laughs> yeah. making a complete whatever who knows but that's okay <laughs> uh man uh, geez i think i just lost what i what, that's okay uh, we're gonna get back to it but when you see that that person doing the 15 hours meditation you know the other flip of that is that if they're meditating and they're doing so from an effective perspective and that's their their time of um of seedling that's not the word i'm looking for but the time of incubation right mm -hmm. because that's part of this process too is that incubation period because no matter what you cannot get to your purpose until you've dealt with your shit. Okay. That's number one. And, and that is going to keep coming and keep coming until you deal with it. And then even so, once you deal with one thing, another thing is going to pop up and it's this constant, uh, it is an awareness. It's completely an awareness factor of your emotional state of what you've gone through, of the pain that you've gone through and healing that pain and, and ironing that pain out with source love. That's that source love and acceptance and forgiveness. And as we go on the healing part of our journey, which is, which might even be the journey is healing mm -hmm. ourselves to get to our completeness, excuse me, then we are able then to see, okay, consciously I'm aware that this pain occurred. Consciously I'm aware that this has now thwarted my thinking process and made me conditioned to think this way or that way or the other way. But because I'm conscious and I'm, I'm supporting this involvement and supporting choosing choosing to find my purpose and choosing then to find what it is i'm trying to do so meaning you're committing then to finding your purpose that that initial step i think of committing i think that as a standalone actually brings together your your higher self into your immediate r reality right because you're committing you're saying hi god i'm here i'm caitlin please let me be an instrument of your peace please let me be of service to you Please let me be free enough from my own baggage and my own demons so that I can stand in that light and share that with other people so that we can then all together uplift each other out of mental hell and out of this insanity of dysfunction and whatnot. Right. But committing to that. It's nice, right? You, you just, you just schooled me. <laughs> I'm speechless right now. I think everything that I had in my heart, in my head, every thought I had just went, you just cleared it all out. You cleared out all the cobwebs, <laughs> all the dust particles, gone. <laughs> like, like I, it's making sense. You right. know, it's making a lot of sense. And because it's big, it's big adult stuff too, right? If you look yeah. at like the three biggest things that caused you pain, of, it may have caused you pain for your whole life. It may have been something that your father said, your mother said, something that your brother did, something that happened when you were in school, something that just completely formed your dysfunctional thinking, right? Because we all have that dysfunctional part mm -hmm. of ourselves because if you're, the chances of you being raised by enlightened people is so slim to none because right. I mean, bear, I, I do the work all the time. I'm not even enlightened. Like I'm right. on my way, but I, I didn't see my, my mother with the Bible praying. I mean, she was a faithful person and a loving person, but I didn't see her using her experiences in a way to further strengthen her faith. Right, because that's what I do. So when you're choosing to do it, how do you find a deeper way to actualize in this reality? How you how you find that strength to make it look differently? You you can literally make your life look differently by putting the psalms on, or by listening to the proverbs, or just by shifting your perspective. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that if you're boggled in your mind with pain and boggled with restrictions on yourself and on your thinking process of what you're trying to do and who you're trying to be. Right. Correct. And that's how we got to get to that in order to even get to our, our purpose, which makes me want to pray again to send some extra like loving energy to yeah. everyone that's watching to just pray to bring the balance into our heart of acknowledging 
everything that goes against the balance, uh, acknowledging everything that is not balanced and, and chipping away at that to liberate our heart from that, from that, from that, from that errant energy, because we can transform that energy and we can then create that, that, that space and start to see in a free will then way again, how we can reposition our intentions to, to liberate ourselves from it. This is in Mary's name, in Mary's name, <laughs> in Mary's name, amen. Amen. But that's what it is. I mean, I pray all day long because what does prayer do? First of all, it just makes you feel so good, right? It just makes yes. you feel so good. <laughs> But then you're, you're doing that rebalancing. Rebalancing, and you're doing a lot of asking. It's, you're doing it's, asking, right? Yeah, you're yeah. asking for guidance and support, exactly. right? And that's what it's there for. And that's that reliance factor of, you know, you God is there for you no matter what. I had a conversation last night with somebody, and they're like, oh, well, I hope, I hope that works out for you. Oh, nothing in life is guaranteed. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. You know what's guaranteed? God's love is guaranteed. Amen. I can count on that Amen. no matter what. I can count on that. That's going to be there for me. And that, that faithfulness, I mean, this is, you know, a conversation of a, like a, a different sector of my life, that legal sector of, you know, everything black, white, and, you know, different perspective. We, there's space for everything. I'm not, I'm not discrediting that part of it, but having that kind of faith in that is changes every kind of perspective. And that is even in just, a, so how do you make that into reality? How do you see that into reality? I said it, that's reality, right? Mm -hmm. I said it, I believed it. Therefore, it's been manifested into my third dimensional reality and to his third dimensional reality, right? So isn't that how it goes? So we have to see the truth. We have to see how inner truth, this is basically inner truth. <laughs> how, do we, how do we know what inner truth and inner knowing? I know God loves me. How do I know that? Well, I know that. So how do I prove it? Well, I prove it because um, I've been safe and protected. I can, I can validate that from so many different experiences. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, also... And maybe that's a trick. Maybe that's not true. I'm not sure. I'm still identifying what that means. But from my perspective is that having that inner knowingness of that fact and seeing an outer manifestation from that belief of, of having kind of, you know, a, a spirited life, a spirited life, a spirited existence. But so now I mean, you, I think that's you really want to ask a few more questions now, Tell me. you know, towards for you. So how, how do you, balance dealing with your block your issue your pain whatever you know that happened your experience that happened to you mm -hmm. how do you deal with that how do you understand that you are a spiritual being in the physical world mm -hmm. and also understand that okay i love the spirituality but I also have to make money here. <laughs> like I have to, so how do we handle these three things? Like what are... Right, so we have, the... hi Omar. Okay, well I love the questions, number one. So I would acknowledge that that's wonderful because this is the bulk of everything is that, how do we deal with the issues? How do we deal with the pain? So the first part of the question is, you know, how then what you go through, you know, I've gone through a lot of different types of trauma in my life, not unlike anybody else, right? Maybe a little bit different. Mm -hmm. because my journey is a little bit different than everybody else's. That's fine. So the first part of it, excuse me, is that you have to confront the pain of what you're dealing with. You have to acknowledge, you have to acknowledge the pain. It's almost like, you know, if you have children, then you can see that, you know, sometimes they're just crying and it doesn't even hurt. There's not really a real booboo there. They just want to acknowledge that they actually have they just, they, they, right, there's something, pain there. they, they, there's they something attention. in the pain. They want the attention, the focus, attention on it. They, love. So that, they, that, want it. they want the love. And that's exactly it. That's the number one and the number two, right? So you will have to mm -hmm. acknowledge the pain and you have to be kind to yourself. And I know, you know, just recently I went through, you know, a different kind of trigger situation where a situation I thought I'd overcome, I still hadn't overcome and I still had to delve deep into it. And I had to sit with it. I had to allow the grieving process to happen, you know, with, with reverence for the experience, right? Because even the most painful of experiences, if, if, if you look at them the right way, they're there in order that we can overcome uh, something. There's something there. There's some lesson to draw upon. And in doing so, we're able then to, we're able then to transmute that pain. And that's the second part of that is how then 
we bring spirituality into is that we take that energy, that, that energy of that, of that situation, of that pain, and we're, we're transforming that energy, right? So, you, and, it's, and it, it is just like that. It's like you have a bad day and someone smiles. Well, that makes you kind of feel better and it can kind of shift your mind a little bit. And it's that kind of idea when you, you but you have to be a grown up. You have to be an adult. And this is, this is why this part is the hardest part of it is you have to confront the pain. And, and you know, some people are in therapy or, or should be in therapy and they could be dealing with the same issue that's maybe 40 years old, literally could be 40 year old issue that they still haven't grappled with or dealt with. So having said that, that, that is the hardest part of this journey, I think, is confronting and accepting that maybe someone that you loved hurt you, and maybe that vulnerability that you had at the time made you shy away from vulnerability. You know, and this is something that brings up in this conversation I saw with Jay-Z and a New York Times editor, and it was that, you know, a lot of people in kind of like harder lives are like, what you looking at? Why are you looking at me like that, right? And I mean, I'm from Yonkers, I get it, right? In any event. And it's because people don't, you don't want people to see your pain, right? Because you don't want them to see your pain because you can't see your pain. Because if you're looking at your pain and you're acknowledging that that pain happened, you are shattering your belief system of what maybe your parents were supposed to give to you, of maybe what somebody was supposed to give to you in, in a safe situation that didn't provide that, that safety, of whatever it may be. Your belief system that is indoctrinated in your society is completely shattered if you acknowledge that something happened in a safe situation that shouldn't have happened, right? I just on that, if it's in that realm of that, of that painful experience, obviously there's so many different ranges of pain, which we can all firsthand attest to on many different levels. But once you acknowledge whatever the pain is for you, number one, get ready to realize there's other levels to it because it doesn't just go away. You have to go through the process of understanding it. And from a spiritual perspective, which I see really what's the point of this transportation process is, when you're able to look at that situation, look at that pain, and then you're able to say, whoa, okay, this happened, and, and, the, the, and, and, and you're looking at then how it triggered or how other things in your life came from that situation of how you made decisions based on that pain. And you say, oh, shit, that happened, that pain happened, but I'm responsible for how I handled the pain. I'm still accountable for how I handled the pain. And that sense of responsibility is what then kind of shifts. It can have the power to shift everything from a place of victimhood to a place of empowerment, right? And that's everything. So when you have that spiritual awareness, right, that's the love of God. That can change everything. That can transmute and transform everything of that pain. It's okay. We have a little. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. No problem. Keep talking. <laughs> so, in any event, having that aptitude of, of transferring the pain and transmuting it into something else is where, is where that spiritual truth literally changes your reality. It can literally change your reality because when you're acknowledging the pain and you're bringing that, that source love into it, and then forget about it as you start to develop your own sense of origination of love and your own sense of of, of the power that you have inside of yourself in order to heal yourself and other people, you direct your own love into your own pain. And that is how you change all of that because the physical manifestation of that, I mean, certainly if you have health ailments that you can find your, your connection to whatever meridian, whatever chakra, there's all these other opportunities of education out there, especially if you have physical pain because you know, when, if you have that kind of handicap, then it's very difficult to get beyond that. But even the mental pain and whatnot, transmuting it and shifting it changes your everyday life. So this is a very tangible way of how we see the spiritual truths change and evolve ourselves into a better third dimensional reality. Now, we still didn't get into how we're going to make money with this. So, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, no, because I, I think you helped me to see through my own perspective what's going on. And I have to agree with you wholeheartedly, you know, because I mean, me experiencing my pain and going to therapy for it, and then after a while realizing therapists really couldn't help me anymore and having to do my own self, you know, soul searching mm -hmm. and, and self discovery. And it caused me to go on a trip to Hawaii by myself and do all these amazing, wonderful things to figure out who I am and then to understand, like, well, what's this whole spirituality thing about? You know, so embracing that piece of it 
And then now saying, okay, I am spiritual. This was my issue or this is my issue. Now, but I was lost. I got lost in translation because along the way, I came across a lot of stuff just the same, you know, just things are going to come to you. It would just think its way. The people are going to come. Everything's going to come. Everything's just going to wonderfully come. But there is the physical where this is where you, you need the money because you're going to have to, depending on your type of service that you're going to provide, you're going to have to advertise. You're going to have to create website. You're going to, this is, I mean, yeah, everything's still digital, but it still has a price tag on it. And I, well, you know, it's so funny. I have to interject here. I've yeah. had like 10, I, I can't even count how many websites I've had. Mm -hmm. You don't even really own a website. You have to keep renewing the domain and yeah, that's you, money. Own, you own your, you own your social media handles. I don't even have a website right now. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll have one maybe next week or I won't. I don't know. I don't care about my website because I have my handles. So what mm -hmm. do I need the website for? Yes, you need the website, but there's things that are for free is what I'm saying in the sense of that, that marketing. But now how is that working for you with the um, social media? Are you getting clients through there? You know, to be perfectly honest with my spiritual work, it's been so altruistic for me. This is the point. This is it. This is, this is the conversation right here. Yeah, right and I'm happy to have this. Because I just stopped being a lawyer, so I need to figure this shit out too. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is but the, the point is, is that, but I've had created so much content Right? Mm -hmm. I've written poems, uh, such beautiful blogs, and such different ways to reperceive ourselves. And so, as I had alluded to earlier, my mental conditioning of I'm an attorney, and this is what I do, and I have now created this story about myself. And through that creation of the story, I have denigrated my spirituality to my hobby, to my outsource, to my therapy. Really, it's been a great sense of cathartism for me to be able to articulate feelings that I'm going through. And actually, while going through very challenging times, I wrote some really powerful, powerful poems mm -hmm. that, that really helped me understand what I was going through. So, I mean, just from a creative perspective, whatever you're creating, there's a there's an intangible value, too, to that. And so notwithstanding the opportunity that we're discussing here now, of how we find our purpose and how we create the value from our purpose in order to sustain ourselves yes. in a way to open up our hearts to receive that value. Yes. Right? So that's what I'm saying. That's the issue that I was at with regards to my professional perspective on myself. So I can only make money as a lawyer. How am I going to make money as a spiritual advisor? Is that really a thing? People are going to pay me for that? Should I accept money for that? Is that... Right. I mean, that's like from my heart, from my blood, sweat and tears. So there's such a level of intimacy for that, too. And then the other part of it is like, do I really want to hear people's shit? I just got out of a service industry. I'm going to go into another service industry where it's more even involved from a spiritual perspective. But notwithstanding that, I see that the opportunity in in just in just creating the, the value is, is that is there. There is a tremendous value in the mental in the mental, emotional, spiritual perspective and just being valued. Because remember, we're now assuming that you're on the purpose, but remember, we're opening up this conversation to people in the audience that are listening that like, whoa, they don't even know spiritual purpose. They're like, I got to go to work tomorrow. I got to pay the bills. I got to get laundry done. Like I hear that too. I just have found, I have found peace in purpose and peace in desiring my life to be purpose. And that's what I want to share most importantly because that is so inspirational. But you see what you're saying now? And this is why, this is my why, or my purpose now. Why I have chosen comedy as my path or my outlet to, one, my mission is to reach the masses, of the people who are not spiritually aware. But to just be waving a spiritual banner, they're going to like, get away from me. <laughs> like, you know, ah! <laughs> like, like they don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. And so you got to find a way to infiltrate their world with your spiritual awareness, infiltrate their world, get their attention, and then bring them up with you. No. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're just like, no, that's not how we're going to No, because I don't want to inherit that but shit. But how do you get their attention then? First of all, the point is not getting anyone's attention. The point is living the truth and living the purpose and living the example. That is the point. 
right? Because only when people are ready are they going to listen. You can bring everyone to the water and they'll be like, all right, I don't have this bathing suit. I'm not interested. I'm not thirsty. I just have a mm -hmm. Red Bull, whatever. So like, I don't think that that's the point. I think that through your positioning, you have the right kind of situations because frankly, I don't want those clients anyway. I don't want to explain to you why it's important to have purpose. I want people that already know they want purpose and let's go, let's mold it, let's manifest it. Let's so create the intentions so that we can support you in attaining them. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that, I think that that is a, a, a black hole, you know, and I think that that's actually a way that we can hide and trick ourselves. Oh, we want to help everybody. And then we're like, no, we're going to help this guy. And the guy is hitting his head against the wall. No, we're going to help him. And he said, he's not going to be helped. And I know for firsthand, because I, I dealt with the situation very similar, and I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried, and on a, on a wasteless cause, meaning that there was, there was value in me positioning myself to support the person, but it was a futile endeavor, and one by which I was just hiding behind, too, because any cognition, any intellectual reasoning would have told me that this person doesn't want to change and that's their right, and I can't judge that. But I have a right, too, to myself and my own energy, so not waste my time on that either, right? Because that's where the responsibility factor comes in. So I think, yeah. I think this is purpose again. And I think understanding your purpose. And, and when we say purpose, I'm going to take it even to a more like of a farmer level of a, knowing who you are. I mean, me, I think, personally, I'm a, I'm a seed planter. Okay. I'm a seed planter. I just plant the ideas. I plant the seeds. And that's why I use humor because everybody wants to laugh. There's no discrimination with humor. People want to laugh. But then I get to slip in those little words of, of, of motivation, those little words of spirituality in between the, between the jokes. And that's me planting the seeds. If you wake up for it or you move on, but at least, I was able to drop those seeds in. And, that, and you are, the audience that's there is open to that. Mm -hmm. You're not going on the street or going to a strip club saying, hey, guys, let's laugh and let's talk about spirituality. So the presumption already is, is that those that have been attracted to you are already are open and up to that level. We're not knocking on doors, and that's Jehovah Witness. I'm not hating on them. Maybe they're doing what they're doing. That's their journey. But that's mm -hmm. not my journey. I can't waste my time on that because I wasted a lot of time on that already. And I learned my valuable lesson in that. And that lesson is that what is most important that I do in my life is how I live my life and how I show an example of what I'm doing in my life. And I think that's the most important thing that I can do is that right. at least at this juncture of my life. But how do you create that then that positioning of the purposeful living whereby that is actually sustaining your life? I think this is a very important conversation for every single light worker energy healer whatever it may be in this zone of okay i'm a tarot reading i'm a psychic and, and some of these psychics are making really good money okay mm -hmm. and you know that they, they're the readings i think they're accurate and i follow tarot and i'm i would like to start doing it myself and I, I definitely follow astrology and i think all that stuff is very valuable in supporting you where you are in your journey because that's a way that you can tangibly say, okay, well, this is happening and energetically this is happening. So through experience and through maybe statistical evidence, we've seen that when Jupiter is retrograde, this kind of behavior comes out to the forefront or, you know, so there's a lot of other, there's how many people are there? How many people have different signs and different things? If you can see a trend with something, I think it's worthwhile to put attention into that, right? In sense of what you're doing, but that still doesn't really answer the question. And the question is that how we can, be in that sense of purpose. And I think what the answer is, is going to be addressing the blocks. I think it's like the blocks, like what I'm saying, I had a mental positioning block of, okay, I'm an, I'm an executive, I'm a professional. So that's how I have to view myself. And that's how I, I financially make my money because that's what makes sense to me. But I think lifting the blockages to that, I think that's what the issue is. I think that when you're lifting and acknowledging whatever it is, that's not completely jiving in your mind and completely completely setting a new orientation orientation excuse me of of how your cash flow works right is you're setting up a whole different perspective in yourself saying okay well this is this is the value and it's about money it's about abundance it's about safety it's about love it's about acceptance and receiving and all of those other areas that no matter what profession you're in 
you could be getting those blockages anyway. So, I mean, again, it's just another opportunity in figuring out what's not whole inside of you, what needs healing, what needs love, what needs attention in order then to be in a stronger state of manifesting your dreams and manifesting your purpose because you can't really have deep dreams without purpose. Anybody can tell you that because you can have whatever you want. Yeah, you can manifest whatever. You're, you're a high roller. You got what you got. All right, you got it. But you can't, you can't have it all without having purpose. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a few questions that I have for you now. <laughs> but I'm going to ask those at a different time. <laughs> I have a few questions for you. Next, next chat. We'll do a weekly chat now. Yes, yes. There's a few questions, but I, I, you should also. Well, I don't know if you would like to talk to the audience members about what is it that you're doing now. Oh, sure. I'd love to. Love to. So now I have um, a new new project that I started, which is modeling, mm -hmm. which is vegan modeling. So as a, a, a very devoted vegan for, I guess, about three years now, I have, you know, kind of gone beyond the food part of it because I, I really am not a great vegan chef, to be honest. I mean, I make salad and kind of smoothies kind of thing. But so that's not my, that's not my thing, getting into the vegan chef thing, though hopefully at some point it would be. I mean, I look forward to that. But the vegan modeling and finding this new outlet of creativity has been an extraordinary source of excitement and joy and peace to me. So having said that, uh, excuse me, thank you. Having said that, um, you know, the vegan modeling and, and seeing as, I, as I've been a poet for years and I have a couple of things on Amazon books, um, poetry and spiritual blogging. So I've been a writer for my whole life, really my whole, since uh, high school or whatnot, I've been really writing and obviously as a lawyer, this, you spend a lot of time writing. Um, and then doing the spiritual writing has been really great, but the, the creativity and the photography and the stillness of the photo and the actual encapsulation of a moment has just been awe-inspiring for me. And so I'm really excited about delving deeper into that and getting into vegan fashion and supporting the vegan trends because the waste that's created and the animals that are injured, there is no way that that doesn't affect you. There's no way that you, you being participant or complicit in, uh, you know, I mean, I want to choose my words very wisely because I'm not in a state of judgment for those that are, are choosing not to be vegan. But just from a, a perspective of rationality, if you look at how the animals are murdered and treated and you look at the end product and you are still deceiving yourself to think that that, that means to that end doesn't affect you, this is delusion. This is straight delusion. So again, that isn't even my, my, the vegan part for the food. I mean, I'm vocal about that anytime. I'm sensitive from the perspective that people are having their physical and mental and emotional addictions to it, right? So it's just like you're dealing with a drug addict. It's like you're dealing with a carnivore. It's the same idea. So you mm -hmm. got to know how you're dealing. And I don't want any problems in my life. I told you, I don't want to deal with things like that are not of that. So I choose carefully, but the vegan fashion and the vegan, the products that are tangible products that aren't as emotionally driven for people is where I have seen this opportunity in my vegan activism, to be honest with you. So that coupled with my creative interests, mm -hmm. you can find me on Instagram at vegan modeling or on Facebook at The Vegan Model. That's what I'm doing for those. And then I'm, the, I'm still writing the poetry and now using photography in a different way to, to caption different moments. So that's been really another nice creative pursuit for me. So I'm at Spiritualize You on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and actually on my Facebook page, I have this seven day video series, Seven Days to Peace, which works. That's all I got to say. You got seven days, you're in mental health. Go to facebook.com slash spiritualize you, Y-O-U. And in the videos, you have seven days to peace. And if you do that, you're going to have peace at the end of it. Now, like everything else, you got to keep training it. So maybe you got to cycle it again. And I'm just going to start a group now of doing the seven days. So every day we do another day. Cause they got a lot of layers to deal with and, and you know, and it's, this is the work. 
this is the work, this is the work that we need to do because at the end of the day, who we are is affecting what we are and what we're experiencing. And so in order to get to a, a deeper sense of wholeness in ourselves, we have to be grown up. We have to be responsible and we have to be empowered about what we're doing and the decisions that we're making in order that we can be examples for our children. Forget about our peers. I mean, yeah, we're all going to die soon, but we got kids, right? So we have to teach them the right way to be. So, I mean, there is a hearkening of a higher consciousness, I believe, here on the 5D, but this is how we're bringing it to the 3D, right? How we bring it to the, because of the actions that we're making. And now I'm really getting more intent about the plastic and how I get plastic out of my life. I haven't discovered how to do that yet, but I'm on that journey too, to see how to get rid of that. And, you know, I have a lot of goals for e-commerce and support different alternative products, because as much as you don't want plastic, if you're going to the store and you got to put parsley, and I'm a vegan, so don't even get me started that they're putting my produce on the same thing that they're putting leek and chicken on, okay? Like there should be vegan lines because that skews me too much. So, I mean, you have so many, so many considerations at play in the same time, right? You don't want to get salmonella, but you don't want to get the plastic. So until there's a conclusion to that, obviously, number one, it's got to be health and safety, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of conflicts still that I'm remedying with this part of the situation, but you know, actively on my journey for that and actively now shifting and consciously now shifting to say, okay, my law career is always there. I mean, thank God, but I don't want to do that anymore because I'm not getting the value from that. So as I'm, I'm breaking away my mental conditionings about, oh, emotionally, I have to do this. No. So the next conversation I would say, okay, this is how you make money as a spiritual person. Because this is how then you connect to that. Because I'm still de dealing with that blockage there and I haven't wanted to. And I haven't really wanted to inherit the problems because I have my own mental blocks about, do I want to make money doing this? I don't know. Because I, there's a commitment to that too. Right? So I've been writing stuff and it's like, oh, I don't have to do it. I just write it. It's easy. And then I just go on my day. No, but then you get involved. Then you're involved. And then, then you, then you got to be, you know, forget about on point. I mean, yeah, I'm on point. Fine. But then you have to really be there and following up and really showing up and really giving more of yourself that I haven't necessarily been interested to do. So, but I'm, I'm getting there in that sense and I'm opening up more and figuring out more how to be of service and sharing more. And so, you know, that's the process for me where I am on. Um, but I have no more mental health, but I know how to deal with my issues. So from a firsthand perspective, I have absolutely changed my entire experience from a reality perspective by utilizing spiritual truths, spiritual awareness, and consistently using that in my life. So, I mean, the tangibility of God is real in your life if you know how to jive that, right? That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. And Amen. Oh, man, that was so awesome. That was well said. There was a lot of action and so many good things in that dialogue there so many good positive actionable like you're taking your action steps and that's the yeah. most thing and i can see this is going to bring you success it's going to bring you success keep at it keep going um is there anything that you would like to add on or wrap up with the yeah i do i think and i think and i think you mentioned it earlier and i think this is the crucial reality reminder is it's the present moment awareness right so success accolades okay that's all good but the success that i understand it now to be is i can get through my day or get through my moment and be able to have control over my reactions and control over myself in that state this is success i think for me this is where that that really makes the most it's the most tangible reality for that of, of being in that state of of peace and being in that state of peace because that state of peace is where creation comes from and where then you can be of of service in the way that you're supposed to of your soul contract of your spiritual truth and and that's kind of how how i see that part of the story but other than that, no, I just go vegan, go vegan if you can, because that's the right thing to do and it's healthier to do. And then other than that, you know, we're going to keep this going and see how else um, to be supportive, to just get to that place. 
you know, to get to that place of inner peace, because that, that is where we stand in a place of empowerment where nobody else has, has an opportunity to hurt you and cause pain to you because you're standing in your power. You're standing in that power position in that state of protection and guidance. And I think that that's, it's bliss. That's salvation. That's the mercy. That's, that's what it is. That's heaven on earth. I mean, so, I mean, for me, I feel like I've arrived because I've arrived to that. And I know that part. So now the rest is okay. And I got to just deal with my little nuances and say, okay, I recognize this issue. I'm going to work on this issue. I'm going to be in this place. And, you know, I think that, that that's just the most important thing is having peace. It's just having inner peace with yourself and dealing with what you've dealt with and seeing what you've dealt with and looking from the place of, okay, this is, the, this is what I've gone through. And I'm going to choose to con confront it and I'm going to choose to transmute it. And I'm going to do so with the loving, healing support of God Almighty and our angels and anybody else you want to call upon. Yeah. That's only from a good, safe space, a good, safe space. And also connecting with the, a good supporting cast here in the physical. Making sure that you connect with the right people. <laughs> oh my God, I just need the angels. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> people, people are good too. You gotta, you gotta find people. Connect with them. <laughs> But all is great. Amen. Is great. Amen, Omar. So you don't know when your your next comedy show is coming up, but when you do, I'm sure you're going to post that, right? Yes, I am. You can look out for me, um, www.omarturner.com. That's where I'm at. Uh, Facebook, you can find me. And I would definitely let you know what my next, when my next show is going to be. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. I'm really excited. And this was great. So we're going to do this again yes. soon. This is okay, awesome. Okay, Omar. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. All Bye -bye. right. Bye. Bye, guys.